A heavenly day everyone! I am Mika May Esna Lugon and this video is all about women in the Philippines which can be seen in chapter 12. But before we proceed to our discussion, let us have first a motivational exercises in order for you to have an insight about our topic. This motivational exercises is called Four Picks One Word. I think all of you is familiar in this game so it would be easy for me to explain the mechanics. There are four images and you have to identify what image it is. There is also a jumbled letters that gives you an idea about the right answer. I give you five seconds to think about the answer. So, let's proceed to the first image. One point to you if your answer is women. Second image. Another point if your answer is colonialism. Third image. If your answer is feminism, then you're correct. Fourth image. You are definitely right if your answer is empowered women. Great job, everyone. Let us now proceed to the introduction of content or topic with Mr. Maurice Gesto. Introduction of content. Woman in pre-colonial Philippines, woman in Hispanic period, woman in American era, the birth of militant groups with the feminism agenda, woman in the third world, practical feminism in the Philippines, presentation of lessons objectives, 1. Describe how the role of Filipinas in society involved, 2. Distinguish Filipinas who advance modern feminism in the Philippines and their responses to express oppression and equality three should know the timeline reflection the evolution and contribution of feminism in the philippines women in pre-colonial philippines during the pre-hispanic colonialization it can be said that there was no discrimination between sons and daughters male and female children did not experience any form of inequality regarding division of inheritance they are also educated equally according to their indigenous system and each took an active role in society when they grew up. Prior to pre-Hispanic period, the Philippines had a simple type of culture. The type of education being taught was basic and it was taught in the standard alphabet Alibata or Baybayin. The women of the pre-Hispanic era were given importance. They could even hold high characters in communities like healers, priestesses, and they could even handle leadership roles and fight as warriors. Men and women were treated equally. They also had important parts in business and trading. They would weave, do pottery, and make jewelry sets to be used for exchanging in the market, in other tribes and other foreign traders like the Chinese. They controlled the operations of transactions because their husbands were not allowed to barter unless their wives approved. They were looked up to because of their wisdom and knowledge. When problems in communities arise and there are no other means to fix it, the babaylan is the one to be called. She would perform rituals and chants to drive away the spirits that caused bad luck. Also, during the pre-colonial period, one of the first few things a man would learn is that he should always respect women. Disrespecting women was unthinkable. If a man does not show respect to a woman, he would be labeled negatively by the society. They controlled how they lived. For example, in the Ifugao region, women had the right to divorce their husbands. May it be because of infidelity, infertility, or if the spouse is unable to provide for the family. Filipino women had the power to decide for themselves. Women in the Hispanic period. The glorious years of the women were destroyed when the Spanish arrived during the 16th century. They brought with them their own idea of what women is and where she is supposed to be placed in the society. From men and women being equal, women were torn lower status than men. Filipinas had to follow foreign moral and culture code to be morally accepted in their own communities. The Spanish clergy saw early Filipinas as too sensuous and free with their behavior but were appreciated for being intelligent, strong-willed, and practical. This kind of woman was ironically portrayed by Rizal through the character of Maria Clara, who was sweet, obedient, self-sacrificing, and who never had the courage to share the fate of her beloved. So in Hispanic period, 
women has no freedom to choose a man that she will marry prior to loveless marriage. They are also more dependent to men. Women in this era lost their power and they were just a supporting role such as status display, reproduction, and child rearing. Stereotype was brought to us by the Spaniards. Women can no longer run along the meadows and swim in the rivers or climb trees as children. The real Filipina was replaced by the ideal women dictated by the Spaniards. During the Spanish occupation, the women being subordinated was instilled. Men rising as the dominant gender, establishing a patriarchal society that has prevailed as surpassed generations and is now the prevalent type of society that we follow. The Philippines was controlled by the Spaniards and the Catholic Church. Women was even snatched of her own right to express her thoughts, being instructed to stay within the shadows with her lips sealed. As the Spaniards tried to reduce in importance the role of the women, the fury and passion that runs in the Filipino blood would never allow this to happen. Pride and honor was definitely worth fighting for, and some women repudiated the Spaniards' way and concept of treating women. Women in the 1890s organized a Masonic lodge called Vigia de Adaption, which gathered many intellectual women with anti-Spanish sentiments. Many outstanding Filipino women, such as Gabriela Silang and Gregoria de Jesus, were active participants of the war against Spanish. These historical facts indicate that women during the Spanish era were key actors in the Philippine Revolution, yet their exploits during the time have yet to be widely recognized. Women in the American Era After the struggles for independence from Spain, women continued their own dynamic role in the Philippine society. There is a document that the development of the various women associations and the leagues during the American period in the Philippines. Women groups at this time were bearers and implementers of social reforms within institutions initially established by men. Decision making at top levels of all these movements had largely been done by men. While certain women's associations or groups campaigned for their voice to be heard and rules given new definitions, the attempts had not made a substantial impact on the exploitation of women through class and gender. One such policy was the introduction of the American system of education and influence on the life and culture of the Filipino during, the, during and after the colonial period. Generally, that is the greatest contribution of American colonialism in the Philippines. In terms of disadvantages, the interruption of the colonist's way of life, the native inhabitants' way of life has been disrupted. Why disrupted? It is because there is no sense of freedom in part of the native life Filipinos. If they will not recognize the American's culture and tradition, it may happen that Filipinos will be slaves until now if they not recognize the colonizer's inhabitants. The disruption of Filipinos' inhabitants led to stand independently. We need to show that the Philippines stand out and not only hoping for the support coming from the Americans. Second disadvantage is the unfair balance of power between the colony and colonizers. We can see that America used its power to help Philippines taking out of Spanish colony. After all, while time goes by, Americans control the minds of Filipinos to convert them into colonizers, influence of traditions and religion. Filipinos' native inhabitants disrupted because of this unfair power. They use Philippines as a weapon to earn lots of wealthiness. As well as all know that the Philippines is rich in the natural resources, the sense of ignorance emerged in the minds of Filipino because through power shared by the American Filipinos have been ignorant that they are robbed by Americans some of Filipinos' treasures. The birth of militant groups with a feminist agenda. Revolutionary groups that emerged in the 1960s and 1970s were associated with the communist and the socialist movements. These groups argued that the nation was suffering from the underdevelopment because its economy served the interest of the U.S. by providing the cheap labor and free access to resources, as well as by serving as a dumping ground for U.S. goods. The new economic model under the American and the post-war period brought about various levels of poverty. 
The nationalist and the militant women's movement, as they call themselves, believed that the only way to achieve equality in the society was to deliberate the nation from the exploitation of the elite and the U.S. However, women issues on equality were considered secondary within the communist and socialist movements, and that militant women had to gather them themselves together under the Socialist Party to push for women's agenda. The iconic Malayang Kilosan ng Bagong Kababaiyan o Makibaka, a radical women's group led by student activists, showed that the root of women's problems lay the feudalism, capitalism, and colonial. The Kilosan ng Kababaiyan Pilipina and the Katipunan ng Kababaiyan para sa Kalayaan were groups formed in the 1980s that challenged the potentially anti-women's ways of the Communist Party leadership. Filipina focused on mainstreaming women's concerns in the transformation of society. It promoted the welfare of the women through social development work, particularly establishing cooperatives and providing training in women's kalayaan. On the other hand, worked within the national liberation agenda to ensure that the women's liberation issues were not made secondary in the movement. A prominent group was the National Organization of Women, which was the adjunct of the United Democratic Opposition Party Coalition. During this time, the intensifying call for conscientization and the honest governance consulted in the foundation of other women groups like the Alliance of Women for Sprung Action Towards Reconciliation and Women for the Ulster for Marcos and Boycott. The Kapisana ng Mga Madre sa Manila, which was composed of religious women and the Church Women United, which was affiliated with the National Council of Churches in the Philippines. On October 28, 1983, about 9,000 women took part in the largest women's march that protested human rights abuses and abuses of the military. This movement was dubbed as the Women's Protest Day. Women in the Philippines have a history of serving their society not only as homekeepers or as producers of children. A reflection of women's engagements in Philippine history shows that the women have been active in all aspects of society. Women were leaders and influential individuals in the building of the nation. 10 Filipinas who advanced modern feminism in the country. 1. Leticia Ramos Sashani. She was a former senator, chair of the National Commission on the Role of Filipina Women and UN Assistant Secretary General for Social Development and Humanitarian Affairs. She is one of the women who spearheaded and solely drafted Convention on the Elimination of All Forms of Discrimination Against Women. 2. Patricia Benedes Lucianan. She served as, as the chairperson of the Commission of Higher Education Chairwoman of the National Commission on the Role of Filipina Women, Chairperson of the Commission on the Status of Women and the Main Committee for the World Conference and Women, Co-Founder of the Asian Pacific Women's Watch, and Convenor of the Asian Pacific NGO Forum in Beijing, as Chair Chair. She continued to advocate gender equality in various education institutions. 3. Teresita Cuentos de Les. She is a peace advocate advocate, former chair and co-founder of Coalition for Peace, National Peace Conference Presidential Advisor on the Peace Process during the time of former Presid President Benigno III and appointed lead convener of the National Anti-Poverty Commission. She maintained an active involvement in the women movement in the institution of Filipina. 4. Sister Mary Jan Manansan. She is a feminism active, activist, former Gabriela chairperson, former president of St. Scholastical, Scholastica's College, and priorist of the missionary of the Benedictine Sister of the Manila Priory. She was also active in the state parliament against the dictatorship during the Marcos regime. 5. Sister Christine Tan. She was the first Filipina to head the Philippines province of the religious of the Good Shepherd and for, former chairperson of the Executive Board of Association of Major Religious Superiors of Women in the Philippines and founder of Alay Kapwa Christian Community. 6. Joy Bayo. She is a popular poet, actress, and scriptwriter and activist. Her works included a collection of poetry entitled To Be a Woman and to Live a Time of War. 
Pario Stitches Filipinos and Philippine Literature at the Departure of South and Southeast Asian Studies and the Asian American Program of the University of California. Lorena Barros Maria Lorena Barros was a woman leader, gifted writer, and one of the icons of the modern Philippine feminism. She was one of the well-known heroes during the anti-dictatorship struggle who founded the Malayan Kilosan ng Bagong Kababihan or Makibaka. 8. Raisa Jahore Jahore is the Moro Program Coordinator of Alternative Legal Assistance Center and Advocate of Muslim Women's Rights and she founded NISA Haku Pi Bangsamuro or Organization for Muslim Women that conducts training community dialogist researches and policy advocacy. 9. Rosel Ambubuyog. She is the first visually impaired Filipina to be awarded Suman, Suma Cum Laude, blind and the age of 6, but did not let her disability hinder her to finish her studies and graduated valedictorian in elementary and high school. She gained full scholarship at the Ateneo de Manila University and graduated with Bachelor degree in mathematics with all possible awards for student excellence and service. She also started a project in partnership with the Rotary Club of Makati Ayala, which helps giving opportunities to blind students. 10. Rosa Henson. Lola Rosa was a comfort woman in 1992. She broke the silence about Filipina comfort woman throughout her autobiography, Comfort Woman, Slave of Destiny. During World War II, she joined the Hakbalahap and served as a messenger. Women in the Third World Numerous forms of oppression occur because of the women's socialized gender. Some forms of violence, such as rape, domestic violence, gender discrimination, and harassment at work and in homes affect women more than men. As Third World laborers, women are used as part of the cheap labor force. Decent women in agriculture do not only have to work for subsistence wages but also have to contend with the fact that they belong to the class of the landless farmers. Women in the Philippines are made to suffer particularly difficult conditions because of their position as citizens of the third world. As women, they are even more empowered because of the lack of representatives with a significant voice to air, voice to air their concerns and to prioritize their welfare. Practical Feminism in the Philippines Practical Feminism in the Philippines has been dominated by more practical concerns than ideological ones due to the multiple oppression faced by the Filipino women and Filipinas. It has been driven by need to examine concrete issues such as violence against women, harassment and domestic violence, trafficking of reproductive health rights, equality, representation of government and economic security. This feminist movement has have a strong grassroots base usually organized by non-governmental organizations that promote women-oriented development. I will now give the spotlight to Ms. Rosalie Nemes to discuss the summary and guide questions, also the reflection. Of women in different areas and colonization has big difference that keeps on changing the culture and roots. In the pre-colonial period, there was no discrimination against women. They can be leaders in the community also had an equal access and control of production resources. When the Spaniard colonized Philippines, women has been sanctioned in, into a, another class and the cultural change of the society had happened. The Filipino shelter need to follow a foreign culture and system. There is also an unequal treatment against women prior that they were weak and soft compared to men's. The best character of portrait in prehistoric Hispanic period is the image of Ma Cla Maria Clara who is weak and modest. Women in this era lost power in, in the society and they are just a supporting role. There are 10 Filipinas who advance, advance modern feminists in the country. Who are those? They are Leticia Ram Shahani, Patricia Benitez Loconan, Teresa Juanitis Dilit, Sister Mary Jan Manansan, Sister Christine Tan, Joy Barrios, Lorena Barrio, Barros, Rosa Jajori, Rosalia Mbubuig, and Rosa Henson.
Both of them are the icons of modern Philippine femininity and aspire to have gender equality during the Marcos region. Do you have any idea about the status of women in the, in the third world? Okay, so women in the third, third world made to suffer. They were experiencing violence and the culture dictates women place in home. For example, they are the primary caregivers of children and elders. They were also given a lower status and pervading gender equality. For example, women in developing countries often act as a cheap source of labor for firms. In manu manufacturing, women are mainly employed in jobs as an irregular worker or substitute workers to men, if ever that they were absent and able to duty. They are also paid less than the male worker. As I learned about our topic, which is women in the Philippines, they have differences in women in the colonial period and women today can be compared in many ways and in almost all aspects like how they behave, how they live every day, how they interact with opposite sex, sex how they handle courtship, how they how they view family, and how they value the essence of being a woman. We, women in the Philippines have relatively evolved, depending upon the people and colonized her country. As discussed before in class, before the Spanish era, Filipino women were made equal to that of men. As maternal and paternal lineage, were recognized by the time. Women were give great power in their own clan and were central to community life as well as well because of this butter material and cognitive kinship system. Priorities of women today are very much different. Women today pursue careers and business anywhere and everywhere, having children in care of others of the regulating husband on the side. This appear to have contributed to the destruction of homes and families. Our discussion will end here and thank you for watching.